Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Guys, today we are going to wrap up the cardiovascular emergency section. This is going to be a kind of a quick video because it's just talking about some of the overall causes. And this is great, guys. This can help you really kind of some things to think about when you get those patients complaining of chest pain, right? Now, of course, this is all the causes, right? We can go on and on and on how many different things could cause a patient to have chest pain, but I want to kind of go over some of the highlights of them because you will see this on exams as reasons why a patient might have chest pain, right? So you got to start thinking about this type of stuff, especially with the scenario-based questions that may lead up to why that patient could have chest pain. But of course, guys, before we get going, listen, I want to tell you why this is important. I know I've said this before, but it's not just for exams. While it does give you some key information, to help you pass your exams, right? It's also helping to build your knowledge base. It's going to make you make better clinical decisions, write better reports, and interact more, con you know, more efficiently with other healthcare providers, right? So keep all that in mind, guys. It's not just droning on about some basic stuff that you don't already know, um, or that you might already know. It's also stuff that kind of just to kind of ring that bell a little bit, get you thinking help build that knowledge base, motivate you to look at some of this stuff further if you're not quite getting what I'm talking about, right? And to really make you a better overall provider, all right? So let's get going, guys. Let's just wrap up this cardiovascular emergencies here today. And one of the main things that can cause, of course, is angina, right? That's a big one. And it breaks down to either stable or unstable, progressive, or pre-infarction type of angina, right? It's not really an MI, Okay, it's that intermittent attack of chest pain the patient might get, and it's usually due to reduction in blood flow to the heart muscle, okay? Things can cause it, like stress, like uh, exertion, or even cold weather, okay? So these are some of the reasons why a patient might have angina, right? But usually it will resolve itself, right? But sometimes, like I said, see in the pre-infarction, you might end up getting that MI, right? That acute myocardial infarction. And that's that death of an area of the heart muscle that's due to a blockage, not a, a reduction like an angina, but a blockage of flow to the heart, okay? And to the coronary artery, a specific coronary artery. It might be one, it might be a few of them. And this is why we look at 12 leads and we try to find out what artery might be involved and things like that, right? So, uh, just some of the two major things that might be called chest causing chest pain, and the one that you should probably be thinking about maybe first. What are some of the other things we can think about, right? Well, there's things like um, an aneurysm, right? And that's that normal dilation of the aorta, right? Things like an aortic dissection, and that could be a sudden tear in the wall of the aorta. A lot of times it's caused by trauma. It could be caused by other things as well. Um, and then we have this here, the cholecystitis. And this is something to think about where a patient has that pain due to inflammation of their gallbladder, right? And sometimes abdominal pain and abdominal situations can cause chest pain as well, right? And what about CHF? Patients that could be in CHF, you know, that, that circular congestion that's due to an inadequate blood flow, right, could be causing chest pain as well. That's why a lot of times you get CHF patients, you don't want to just put them on CPAP and give them nitro and stuff like that and take them to the hospital. It's also important if you get a chance, if you're able to do to do a 12 lead as well on those CHF patients to make sure they're not leading into what we talked about earlier, that MI, and that there's actual blockage of um, blood as well, okay? So stuff to think about, right? Um, guys, just some other stuff. I'm going to rattle off some other causes here just so you kind of get an idea of what some of the things seeing here. You can get things like blood, blood trauma, like I mentioned, pancreatitis, pericarditis, right? Look up, look up pericarditis, guys. Look at a 12 lead for a patient that would have a pericarditis, and you'll see things that look like the patient might be having an MI, right? But think about why the patient and their age and what the reason is why they might have pericarditis. So if that doesn't kind of ring true to you, open that textbook, man. Look it up. See what pericarditis is. I think you will be interested to see if you're not sure what it is and that's going to help you when you assess patients that are complaining of chest pain okay that might not that you might not necessarily suspect to be having elevation in a 12 lead but you might actually see it 
Okay. Um, other things, guys, again, pneumothorax. I mentioned pulmonary embolisms in a previous episode as well. Um, certain dysrhythmias can cause chest pain. Bradycardia can cause chest pain. Patients that have had a severe cough for a while might have some muscle issues going on there. That could be causing chest pain. Patients that hyperventilate, overworking those chest muscles, overworking those that muscle area, they could also be having chest pain, right? So all these things, guys, to kind of think about of causes that might be causing chest pain. Now, of course, I encourage you to go look at more of this stuff, guy. Open your textbook, look on Google, use a resource like my TurboMedic. Um, just find out other ways that the patient could be having chest pain, okay? Um, because when you know the causes and you know the kind of the breakdown of what even each of these things might be doing, the signs and symptoms, right? You can differentiate between a cardiac related chest pain and a non cardiac related chest pain, right? So just kind of different things um, to think about, okay? Um, just, again, guys, stuff to think about, key elements that you're going to want to think about when you're dealing with your patients, when you're taking exams, when you're writing your reports, okay? All this stuff ties in when you're doing your patient assessment, your patient care, and your documentation, okay? All right, guys, next time we are going to move on. We're going to get into diabetic emergencies, in the next section here of the Monday Minutes. Um, and that's going to be a few uh, 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 slides, a few presentations as well. It's got a significant amount of pages for that. We want to cover all the different areas on that, right? All right, guys, that's it um, for me. Uh, guys, do me a favor. Be sure to connect with me. Engage with me on social media, all right, on Twitter at uh, or Instagram, both. I am at EMS Safe on both of those channels. Or you can check with me on Facebook as well. And I'm at Facebook.com forward slash EMS Professional. Guys, be sure as well. You want to build that knowledge base. You want to do better on your exams. Be a better professional. Be a better provider. Go check out the main site at EMSSEO.com. Get some study help there if you need it. Increase your knowledge if you need it. Or use the practice exams there as well. And especially the exam success formula, if you're taking an exam soon or coming up on an exam, this will help you, okay? Um, so go check that out. Lots of resources there, free and low cost as well. Um, I'm sure it all will help you with your EMS success path. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours in the Monday Minutes. Uh, contact me if you need to. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. And visit the blog at emsofficehours.com for other episodes like this and, of course, the podcast as well. All right, guys, that is it. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay